This is Władysław Sikorski, a politician and Polish general. He's one of the heroes of the Polish-Soviet War of 1920. During the battle for Warsaw, military units under his command were able to stop the Bolshevik invasion and save the capital. But for the last 10 years, Sikorski has been in opposition to the current Polish government. Since the moment of Germany's invasion of Poland, he's been trying to get Edward Rydz-Szmigły to send him to the front. But he's received no answer yet. The Red Army has invaded Poland from the east. Sikorski decides to flee and join the Allies in France. He travels via Romania, the only neutral neighboring country. Poland's other neighbors are all now at war with the country. That same day, the President, Prime Minister and Commander-in-Chief leave Warsaw. It's clear to everyone that after the Soviet Army's invasion, Poland has no chance of winning the war. But despite this, volunteers and elements of the army continue to defend Warsaw. Two weeks later, the Germans occupy the city. There is no water, gas or electricity in the city. Polish radio is silent. The Germans drop propaganda pamphlets from the air over Warsaw with a call to surrender. The city continues to fight back. In the end, the Germans lose patience, break the promise they made at the beginning of the war, and begin to attack civilians from the air. Warsaw is the first casualty of World War II's devastating aerial bombing campaigns. Carpet bombing kills 10,000 people and 30,000 are injured. The German army, with support from the air, reaches the city center. The end seems to be in sight. Hitler issues a directive ending the war in Poland. But the war cannot be stopped just with one directive. The French Air Force bombs German Zeppelin factories, while food rations are introduced for German civilians. The funeral of General Werner von Fritsch, the first German general to die in World War II, is held in Berlin amidst much pomp. Fritsch died during the battle for Warsaw, and it was rumored that he sought his death as he was opposed to Hitler's regime. Following another mass bombing, Warsaw finally falls. General Julius Rommel makes the decision to surrender. But an underground battle continues. The service for Poland's victory is founded in Warsaw. It is the first military resistance organization and is led by Michal Karaszewicz Tokarzewski, Sikorski's longtime colleague and friend. At the same time, an educational center for the future Polish resistance is founded, and the Polish government goes into exile in France. At first, the same discredited leaders try to run the government in exile, but the French and Polish émigrés are opposed to it. Opposition leader Sikorski becomes the commander-in-chief of the military. His army is primarily composed of Poles who fled to the West in September 1939. He soon becomes the leader of the Polish government in exile. He continues until his death in a plane crash in 1943. He doesn't see how his army, together with its allies, prevails over Germany.